Hi guys, we are back with our Severe Career Mode episode number 8. In the last episode, we had three games against Espanyol, Juventus, and Atletico Madrid. Uh, we played Espanyol, we drew 1-1, we then went to the Juventus Stadium, we drew 1-1 again, and then we played Atletico Madrid and got a huge result, 4-1 win. And that came off an Iguain hat trick. Hopefully you can do some more of these next three games which we have, which is against Celta Vigo, a very decent side in La Liga. Then we have Rayo Vallecano, and then we have a game in Europe against Olympique Marseille. And that game's going to be very big because Juventus are most likely going to win this group. We have to be realistic about it. And me and Mar Marseille and I are going to be fighting for that final spot to get into the Champions League. Uh, but if you didn't see that, after this episode, the next episode will be a very special episode because we have a game against... Real Madrid and I really hope we'll win that game it'll be a huge game hopefully the board will get excited that we win but that's the next episode let's talk about this episode uh, the lineup we have is very rotated because in the last episode as you guys know we played a very strong team against Atletico Madrid a lot of the players retired so we have a lot of players uh, rotation players playing such as Kingsley Coman and Burton Traore here's a Celta Vigo lineup uh, no one stands out um, immediately. I'm surprised they're not starting Nolito because that's like the only player that I know who plays for Celta Vigo and he's probably their best player and he's probably the, he used to be one of my favorite players back on FIFA 13. He had such a good card. He was like a mini Ronaldo but let's not talk about FIFA 13. This is FIFA 15 and they get a good shot right at the keeper. Perries it out wide. We know how we feel about our keepers in this game. Their keepers are not good but he finally, finally did something decent there but they get a delivery in Awful delivery. Ibora gets it. Nothing happens there. 30 minutes later, we have the ball. Hit it upfield. Poor uh, touch by... I don't know who that was. Uh, but Celta Vigo get the ball. They're playing some nice passing around. But eventually, we'll get steal the ball. We play it upfield to Cristoforo. Plays it to Rebeo, who gets an over-the-top ball to Gaimero. Keeps on running. Can he score? Can he score? And there's Gaimero letting us down again. Uh, that's what I was talking about in the last episode. I just... If this how we're Iguain, I feel like he would finish that, but it was still a good attempt nonetheless. We got a corner out of it, but nothing happened, unfortunately. But Rebeo's got the ball again. He's running down the side. We see Gamero. We play him, and... Ooh. Oh, man, Gamero. You know what? You're not making your chances look good if you want to stay here past January, but that's happened a lot in this career mode because whenever a player takes a shot, if they take it with the right foot, uh, that bad shot would have gone in, but Gamero takes it with his left foot. I know this happened with Kakuta earlier in the series before, and he just shanked it to the wide post just like him, but um, if you saw that there, like a little injury sign popped up for Rebeo, then he got right back up, um, but I think he was able to get back up because it was only a shoulder injury, but he obviously couldn't stay on the field because he's being a little wuss, so we had to bring on Alex Vidal. I was going to bring on Texaria, but... Uh, I wanted to give him a nice rest from that last game, and I thought Vidal would be suited at attacking mid role. honestly. Vidal can play anywhere. He's such a good player, and mainly just because he's he has very good stats all around, and he's very pacey, so when you have pace on FIFA, you can stick him anywhere on the field, but we're going to stick Iguain on. Hopefully he can get a late winner against Celta Vigo, because nothing was really happening in this game. Very boring game. Uh, most of the chances we were getting were being shanked like that guy Mero shot. And hopefully with Iguain on, uh, he would actually finish things. But as you see here, this is pretty much the entire game summed up. They had their entire team behind the ball, and they were just waiting for me to lose the ball. Then they would try to counter me. Obviously, they didn't do it well. And then we would go right back, and they'd bring all their men back. But 88th minute, we get the ball. Iguain plays it up to Vidal. We know how good Vidal is. Does some step overs to get past that man. Keeps on running, and keeps on going. And you guys will not guess what happens. Look. He saves it. How do he save it? But he scores it! And he scores a 90th minute winner to win us the game against Celta Vigo. Continuing our win streak that has started from that game against Atletico Madrid in the last episode. And honestly, the Dallas scored so many important goals for us. He scored that goal against Copenhagen in the Champions League to draw 1-1. He scored a solo goal against Athletic Bilbao for us to win 1-0. And now he scored the goal against Celta Vigo, and we win 1-0. And if you guys saw that there, they actually almost deflected that. If the defender moved over a little bit to the left, that 
pro ball probably wouldn't have even squeezed in in between the goalkeeper and the defender, but no ifs anymore, and we win that game 1-0. All three points are in the bag. Uh, our next game is against Rayo Vallecano. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you the stats here really quickly of the Salta Vigo game, and as you can see, we dominated them. They had one shot on target the entire game. They had 58% possession, but it didn't really matter. But fortunately, Rebeo's injury, uh, his elbow, he actually had a bruised elbow, not a shoulder injury. He's only out for eight days, I think. So nothing too bad. Uh, one of our uh, reserve center backs wants to play, but I was looking at his stats. He's like 5'10", uh, pretty slow, not strong. So I wasn't going to start him, especially because we need to prove to the... We need to prove to the club that we're the right manager, and if we're starting him and we lose, that would be really embarrassing. But here's Rao Balacano's team. No one stands out to me, but a very solid team in La Liga. And here is our lineup. We have gone with the stronger lineup than the last game, but still rotated. Uh, we have the main man, Krakowiak, in there, and we also have Gamero up top. Hopefully he doesn't mess up like last game and actually score some goals, but uh, we get a free kick here in the first minute of the game. And you guys will not believe this. As I was talking about, Kirk Kowiak, he whips it into the box. Suarez is on the back of the post, heads it into the goal, and Kakuta is there just poke it. Kinky Kakuta with the goal. And I think that's his, yeah, that is his first goal for Sevilla. Running back to the man who whipped the ball originally in, Kirk Kowiak, And that is a hell of a set piece. Perfect ball out, heads it back in. Kinky, Kinky Kakuta just pokes at it. And he actually gets stepped on, I think. That, that probably really hurt, but as you can see there, yeah, he got steps on both of that guy's feet are just on his leg, and he's a pretty, he's a pretty, uh, he's a pretty skinny guy, so that probably hurt, but Kakuta doesn't care, he's just too excited about that goal he just scored, first goal of the game, and that would not be his last goal of the game, uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, but, um, they have the ball here, playing it around on the sideline, get a through ball, uh, pass, pass it back, pass it back, what am I saying? But um, I'm just diving in with my defenders, not doing anything really smart. And this is pretty much how Balacano played the entire game. They were just kind of moving the ball around around my box. And then the final piece just wasn't there. Like, they had all the space open, everything they did right, and then they just did a cross, and it was way over hit. And we try and counter them with Gamero. Unfortunately, he's just too slow, so like nothing came out of that possession. But uh, a poor throw in by them. Heads it by our defender, gets it up to Reyes, gets it to Gamero. Passes it back to Reyes. Reyes kind of slow, can't get there, and unfor unfortunately, it hits one of their defenders. Gets back to us. We play it back to Trey Molinas. And speaking about Reyes, I just I don't know. He's too slow for this team, and that's just not me being a pace for. If you're gonna be a uh, if you're gonna be a mid who's like slow, you better have some good strength. And Reyes does not have that good strength. He's so he just bad on both ends of being outside mid. He can't run fast and he can't like push off a defender but uh, as you can see there they actually get a red card for a foul on Kinky Kakuta. That's his new nickname. Like it or not that's what it's going to be and he just got absolutely wrecked. I'm not sure if that's actually a red card. Uh, it was kind of a harsh foul in my opinion. I don't know if it was a red. I don't even let, it, let alone I don't even know if that was a foul but we all know how referees are in this game. Um, but we're not complaining. Uh, we're gonna look, we're gonna take Gaimero off the penalty and we're gonna give it to Kirkowiak, the man. He didn't get a goal or an assist off that first goal we scored, but he probably had the most important part in that goal. And one thing that annoys me in this game, you're about to see it. Uh, whenever you take a penalty and they take a long time to line up and get ready, uh, EA makes it so I think that's like part of your timer. As you can see there, I hit it in the red, but fortunately uh, I still got it in. If that ever happens to you, just don't put too much power on it and just keep on moving the left analog stick down. And it should still go into the back of the net. But yeah, um, if you don't take the penalty quickly enough, uh, then it just takes it for you. And that really makes me mad. I understand why, but if they're going to allot that timer into the time that it takes for uh, a cutscene of their player at the ball lining up and stepping back to affect the penalty timer, then I really don't understand what's the point of it. It should only take into effect when you're actually getting ready to take the penalty. But Rao Valacano would whip it across, and that would be the last action of the first half. 
Uh, one goal from Kakuta and one goal from Krakowiak at the spot will give our team a 2-0 lead along with a man sent off from their side. But as you can see by the stats, two shots, two on target. That's all you need really, two goals. And they have two shots, zero on target, zero goals. It all makes sense. But um, Brown Volcano definitely were a better team in the second half. Still not performing as well uh, as you would expect. But I do not know how Gamera was not offside there. He was definitely offside. Ref doesn't call it. But he is just too clunky for me. I can't stand him. I like tall strikers. I like tall, strong strikers. I'm not a pace whore. But Gamera is just not a good tall, strong striker. It's as simple as that. And Kakuta's taking the ball down the line. Is he going to score? No, he isn't. The same mistake from last time. Players not willing to take a shot on the right foot that would get the ball into the net. If Kakuta shoots out with his right foot, then he would score. But since he's a left-footed player, he thinks that he has to shoot it with his left. And just the angle that you take the shot with, if he takes that with his left, it's going out. But if he takes it with his right, it's going in. And this is probably Raul Balacano's best chance uh, in, this, in this game. Uh, they had a lot of crosses around our box, but Gamero has the ball again. I'm not trusting him, so I'm going to play it off to Suarez. I see Kinky Kakuta at the far post. We're going to hit it on the ground. He gets it in for his second goal of the game and for his second goal for the club to be uh, the man we fought from Chelsea. And that's going to take some pressure off his back. Some people have called him a flop, but more importantly, that's going to take some pressure off my back because, seriously, the board was doubting me. I didn't think they were going to fire me, but finally, we're getting a nice little win streak going. And we subbed off our two best players probably for the game, try and keep them uh, fit for the game against Marseille, which is really important for us to prove the board wrong also. Uh, we took off uh, Kerkowiak and Kakuta, but um, the game ends... In the 90th minute, we win 3-0. They had a man sent off, and that's about you can see by the stats. Three shots, three on target. That's all you need. And look at that. The board is happy with us. That just made my day, honestly. They finally have realized that I'm the man to hold down this club, to lead this club to glory, two trophies. And we go into this game against Marseille, and if we want to bring those trophies and glory to Sevilla, we got to be doing well in Europe, and as you can see, Marseille are actually ahead of us by one point in the table, but we're going to try as hard as we can to uh, close down that gap in this game. Uh, as you can see by their lineup, very solid lineup once again, uh, just to name a few players, Mandanda, Enkolu, Gignac, and Andre Ayu, along with Mbulo. So they obviously are the real deal, and here's our lineup, uh, probably one of the strongest lineups we can put up, uh, excluding players that are like injured and tired. And we actually started Kingsley Combe in this game. I don't know. He just shows up in the big games. And But unfortunately, this game was pretty much dominated by Marseille in the first half. They had all the possession, and most of the possession was in our half. But fortunately, Beto actually does not mess up there. He usually probably would have let that hit his face and go into his net because he's a completely idiot sometimes. But as you can see here, we play to Texaria. It doesn't get a good touch, and they steal the ball. And that's pretty much how the game was going for me. Everything I was doing was getting shut down by Marseille. They were excellent on the ball going forward and defensively, but honestly, it was still nil-nil. And I probably would have taken the draw because I would have taken my chances at beating uh, the next teams that are coming up in the Champions League. But I do not know how Gignac missed that. When you're a number nine, you have to put in chances like that. And if you're missing that, you're going to get dropped Gignac. But Thank you for missing that, because if you made that, then I would have been very pissed off. But we go into halftime, uh, both teams haven't had that many shots. This game has been a fight by both the defenses, very solid defenses. Um, actually, I don't know how Beto's actually holding up so well, uh, considering that in the last episode, he was completely awful. Uh, maybe, he, maybe he watched the last episode, maybe he saw, wow, I really do look like a dumbass. But as you can see there, he caught the ball, gets it out. And nothing really is happening, so I try to make some subs. So I bring on the man who is in form, and that is Kakuta. And even though Kakuta had a pretty good game last game, not even pretty good, he had a great game last game, he was playing very well. I just can't wait for Vitolo to get back from injury because he's just a, such a better finisher. And as you can see, like we're just kind of winning games like by small margins lately, like 1-0, maybe like a 3-1 or 3-2. Speaking of small wins, we get the ball to take there, takes a shot! Uh, you guys stopped that one in, didn't you? <laughs> no, you didn't, but if Texaria had a bit more power on that volley, 
most likely that would have gone in. We would have gotten three points, but that's just not how it was written. And they counter us right back. And I was scared at this point. I was like, please don't score. Please don't score. They get to IU. Get to Debatu IU. They sub on. Great substitute. And what a save by Beto. Did you see that? With his feet. Oh my goodness, Beto. He was the man of this match for me. Definitely. He kept us in this game. And we tried getting another late goal uh, with Koke down this line. We cut back in, but he gets the ball stolen off of him. Fortunately, he doesn't hit the floor, hopefully picks up a penalty, which we actually have been picking up a lot of penalties recently. And that game ends, nil-nil, pretty boring game, not gonna lie. Uh, and that's just gonna keep the margin between us and Marseille at one point in the Champions League, so we really need to win our next couple games if we wanna be serious about progressing, but uh, we're gonna end this episode right here. As you can see, we're actually sitting in fifth place, so we've gone from 12th to 5th. That is serious improvement, I'm very happy with that, but if you liked it, please drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here, share it with your friends, do all that jazz. In the next episode, we're starting off with Real Madrid, so get hype, get excited, see ya.